Hey guys, time for a quick quiz. How much would you pay for this old pine bedroom dresser? 50 bucks? 10 bucks? Maybe even 100? Let me know down below. G'day folks, Uncle Knackers here from Do Your Wife for Knuckleheads. If this is your first time here and you want to see more videos on super simple DIY projects that anybody can build and easily knock over in a day or two, start now by subscribing and make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything. Alrighty, on with today's project. In today's video, I want to show you how easy it is using the technique of whitewashing to transform any old piece of furniture, like this old dresser here, into a designer piece. And in the process, if you want to, you can flip it for a profit. So make sure you stick around and watch right through to the end of the video to see how it turns out and to see how much money it actually finishes up making. Should be a good one. Now I'm going to let you in on a little secret. This was listed on Gumtree, which is Australia's equivalent to Craigslist, and they had a price of $70 on it. And in the words of the great Daryl Kerrigan from the movie masterpiece The Castle, I told the guy, you're dreaming. And after a bit of negotiation, I finished up buying it for a measly 30 bucks, which I reckon is pretty good, considering that all the drawers have metal drawer runners, and the dresser itself is actually in pretty good nick. So all in all, I think I got myself a bit of a bargain, which is exactly what you want for a project like this. So how do you go about obtaining that beautiful whitewashed effect? Well, it's really simple. All I'm going to be doing is with my electric sander, I'll be sanding all this stain off and going back to the raw pine finish. Some people, when they're whitewashing, and the piece is already stained or painted, they'll just give that a light sand and then apply the whitewash and then in various places sand a few little bits off here and there which will bring the underneath colour up and through giving off that aged appearance. For this project we're after the Scandi feel which means going back to the raw pine and when the whitewashing paint has been applied and dried the grain from the pine will come through giving off that beautiful Scandinavian appearance. Alrighty, let's chat, more action. Let's crank up this sander and sand the old girl back. The stain comes off surprisingly easy with the electric sander. Start off using an 80 grit sandpaper to get the bulk of the stain off and follow that up with a 120 grit paper and then a 240 grit paper to finish it off. Beautiful! <laughs> Love it! Sanding creates a lot of dust, so to get rid of that, I'm just going to give the dresser a good blow down with my portable blower and then finish it off by wiping it down with a lint free cloth, which will get rid of any remaining dust particles, and then I think she's ready for paint. Speaking of paint, how's this? I was in a paint shop the other day looking for a particular shade of paint, but the young bloke behind the desk said that that particular shade doesn't exist and that it must have been a pigment of my imagination. <laughs> I thought you cheeky little... Now, if you can do me a big favour, out of 10 on the dad joke scale, how'd that one go? Let me know down below. Now one of the most common ways that most people use to whitewash furniture is they'll get some water-based paint, they'll add some water to it which thins that right out, you give it a bit of a mix and then simply with a paintbrush or a rag just apply it to the piece that you're working on and that'll give you that nice washed out aged appearance. Now that's all well and good, but I do have a few issues with the technique of watering down your paint. And that is, whenever you get a good quality paint and you water it down, it then starts to affect the quality of that paint. Especially in regards to how well the paint will stick to your furniture, the durability of the product, and also the color consistency if you're mixing up different batches of the same color. 
which is why I'm trying this new product from Monster called Color Wash that addresses all of those issues. The Color Wash comes pre-mixed in a variety of popular colors, so you don't have any problems with color consistency. It has all the qualities of a full strength paint, and the paint is also translucent, meaning that once that color wash is dry, the grain from the pine below will show through that finish, giving off that beautiful Scandinavian or whitewashed appearance. Now, just before we start painting, I wanna give a big shout out to the guys from Monster who supplied the paint for this project. And if you like what you see, I'll leave a link to those guys in the description box down below. So do yourself a favor and check those guys out. Tell them Uncle Knackers sent you. Color-wise for this project, I'm doing something a little bit unusual by going for a three color combo. I've got the light gray, the yellow, and the white, which is a little bit different to the usual exercise of whitewashing of just plain old white, which a lot of people tend to do. And to finish the job off, I'm going to replace these run-of-the-mill wooden draw knobs with these pretty snazzy looking gray and white porcelain numbers that I bought in a pack of 12 from Amazon for the princely sum of $13. So if you'd like to check those out, I'll leave a link in the description box down below. The top of the dresser is going to be light grey, the side and the front are going to be white. So I just want to take those off, just like that. To apply the paint, it's dead easy and anybody can do it. All you really need is a half decent paintbrush and the beauty of the paint is that it's water based, which means to clean up, all you need to do is wash it out in water. Good stuff. Okay, let's get this show on the road. Now we'll do the top first in the light gray. And just remember, don't lay it on too thick because the thicker you do it, the less transparent or translucent the paint's going to be. Okay, the first coat of the light gray is done. So now what we'll do is we'll attack the side and the front with the white. And you can really see, or well, I hope you can see, how that grain's coming through. It'll even be more prominent once it dries. Now all I'm trying to do here is just paint the front edge of this carcass. I don't want to go in here, otherwise the job gets out of control. So when you're painting, Thin line like we have here and you accidentally get some paint on that edge there just grab a wet rag like I have here and give it a wipe down and that cleans it up very nicely beautiful okay it's now time for this awesome looking yellow which I'll apply to the fronts of all these drawers and this is going to provide a really nice contrast to the white and the gray. I hope, fingers crossed. Looking good so far, and that gray is really coming through. Alrighty, first coat, all done. The next step in the process is to let this totally dry and then come back and give it a quick sand with a 240 grit sandpaper. And the reason for that is that when you apply paint to a raw timber surface, it brings up all those little tiny burrs, timber burrs, which makes the surface feel a bit furry. So I'll quickly knock those off and then come back and apply that second coat. It's looking good. It feels beautiful. Much better. Now even before I give this a quick sand, you can see how the paint effect has the grain coming up through the paintwork. Looks awesome. Love it. All right. 
already, it's all been sanded back, wiped over, polished, you name it, and now it's ready for the final coat. Starting off with the top with the nice light grey, and then I'll work my way through the rest of the project. Now, I'm not gonna bore you with all my painting, but make sure you stick around, because I'll be back shortly with the end product. Alrighty, let's do this. Righto, folks, I think it's just about time to unveil this big beast, and then I'll go through how much it actually cost to do it up, and then how much I'd expect to make if I was to sell it. You ready? Let's do it. And bang! What do you reckon? Now I have to say that I am absolutely wrapped with how this whitewashing project turned out. The color combo of the gray, the white, and the yellow worked an absolute treat. And those gray and white porcelain drawer knobs, they contrast beautifully with that yellow. And the finish from that translucent color wash paint is absolutely fantastic. It gives off that beautiful whitewashed effect and the pine from the grain can be seen through the paint, which gives me the appearance that I'm after. Love it. It's beautiful. Now with everything said and done, the big question is, how much do you think I could sell it for? Initially, I paid $30 for the dresser. All up, I reckon I've used about $30 worth of paint and there's still a heap left in each of these tubs. And those porcelain drawer knobs set me back $13 for a pack of 12. And that comes to the grand total of $73. And I'll throw in an extra five for sandpaper, so all up, 78 bucks. Now the good news is, is that I've just had the dresser valued from a very well-known furniture shop here in town called Vast Interiors. That's those guys over there. And Heidi, the owner, has given me a price range of between four and five hundred dollars. Bang. Mission accomplished. Now, if you want to see more super simple DIY upcycling projects like the one we've just done, make sure you click on that playlist over there. Alrighty. Thanks for watching. And after all that, I think I need a cup of tea. So till next time, be safe and I'm out of here. Cheers. And, ah, whoops. And, oh God.